high quality content is about to get dropped here. High quality content. <laughs> uh, since we're wearing hats today, uh -huh. um, Kevin, you just admitted to me that this is one of two now that you own. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so the hat that has been retired, it's just been retired from public view. It's, it, it still ah. gets used for, for out in the yard, the gardening hat. It's like to keep the, the poison oak hat. from going on my head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could like, why don't you get one of those like little beekeeper outfits if you want to try to keep yeah, like full coverage. all of yeah. the, exactly. I should get full coverage. Um, my one other hat is like a, a full sun hat, like a, you know, fishing hat, yeah. kind of a, I don't know, even bigger than that. It's it's just for when I'm actually out working in the sun, keeping Big it off floppy my neck. Brim. I got to keep it off the front and the back, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I burn you gotta, easily. You got to protect, you have to protect the mullet. I have to, I have to protect the business. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the party. Yes. <laughs> I don't recognize like such a low number in the quantity of hats. What what is the deal with how much hats cost? This is this is there there are so many hats in the world. There are literally yes. millions. Why do they cost forty dollars? What is the deal with a trucker hat costing forty dollars? Well, bucks? first of all, you are sporting the old Patagonia there, so you're not paying for the hat. You're paying I, yeah. for the and by the way, I'm wearing a this is a hat that was purchased last year at the AIA convention in San Francisco okay. and I bought it at the airport and it still cost me under 20 bucks. Wow. And that's wow. See, insane. See, the thing is, is like I was at REI the other day and I'm looking in the garage sale section because I, I was, mm -hmm. they have, they have a dedicated garage sale section at, at my REI. You're a cheap some, yuppie. Some, yeah, some, some don't have. So, uh, I, I I identify as an REI sometimes, right? So sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm just like I really need a hat, and there are I don't have too many hat store options around here, and uh, this one had the right color scheme for for what I was willing to accept. Um, I, so here we are, Patagonia. It was. I'll say that the most favorite. Um, hat store that I've ever been to. It isn't a one that I frequent because I don't wear fancy hats. I'm not a, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're a hat lover. We, we, yeah. we, we saw some fancy hat architects, uh, on, you true, know, at true. the AIA convention. True. Um, yeah. I hung out with one of them, the fancy hat right. man. And, um, I'm not the fancy hat man. I mean, <laughs> like behind, behind me up on the wall, is the only non baseball cap hat I've ever worn. And that's the, you know, floppy hat, desert hat that I wore during Desert Storm. So look, it was it wasn't one of these things that and, and I was issued it. So free. Well, I guess free. <laughs> was it know. really free? <laughs> <laughs> True. I was just like, was it free? Oh right. right. but 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 to this, to, it was, it wasn't necessarily the hat, the hat, the, the hats that they stole at the store because they were fancy and they were like way above my class. I mean, just flat out, but the name was awesome. Hats in the Belfry. Oh, nice. Hats in the yeah. Belfry hats in in, the Belfry. in downtown Annapolis, Maryland. Maybe it should have been hats in the Hellfree. I know that one might have went remember. over your head. Yep. <laughs> it did, but, you know. Uh, but. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Huh? <laughs> no one said these things make you smarter. It's just so gotta, what's interesting got to cover up the frock today. That's all. <laughs> so you bought a hat. Yep. And when I buy a hat, what is the first thing that I do when I you buy like a baseball hat? Curl I it. roll, I roll that, that bill and you seem to have more of like the flat kind of, I, I just um, went with the default setting on this one. It's true. Yeah. yeah. You I, got, I used to do a lot, got, a lot more rolling, but, but yeah, you I got the more of like that one. kind of like 
not quite flat bill, but you've got that kind of semi flat yeah. bill hipster kind of thing. Yeah, this isn't the uh, this soul isn't patch. The, uh, the super flat look, but yeah, yeah. I did take the I tags don't... off. Some people don't take the tags off. They don't take the stickers off. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. See, yeah. I think that's weird. This is a, you know, like a good pen, or like a good sketchbook. It's something to be used. I know. I'm with you. In my, I'm with in, you on that. I will say that my my hat collection, which is is really, it's not like there isn't much diversity in it. It's either Auburn, Detroit, or Tampa Bay stuff. I mean, honestly, is probably Are you talking as about prolific. locations or sports teams. I don't know. Yes, <laughs> sports teams. <laughs> yeah, all all. This of is the, the only. <laughs> this is the only non. Like this was just. I love the logo of. I don't know if anybody can see it, but it's the logo of the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, okay. So, cool. And it was kind of cool. So it's and a I actually bought it tourist. For, it's a tourist. And I, and I actually bought it for my son, and he has nothing to do with it because he's not a hat wearer like I am. So oh, okay. I'm like, you know, hats are made to be worn. Yeah, agreed. It is. Yeah. But I would say that my hat collection is very much as robust as my sketchbook slash my field notes which we still haven't done them and your lammy pen collection and my lammy pen collection you do have a few collections yeah i do whatever mr guitar (laughs) i have a few guitars i don't have have i don't have as many guitars as you have hats but that's not saying much (laughs) that's true yeah I have so, two acoustic guitars, two electric guitar, three electric guitars, and two bass guitars. Does that sound right? No, and, and and this other weird kind of bassy so, guitar. So, oh, and guitar. Yeah, yeah. And then I think I'm and there's going to be some. And there's going to be somebody out the there that's counting, listening to this. Sounds about right. real quick. There's going to be someone that's out there listening to this show that is going to identify with this next comment. Oh, and it's the guitar that I bought hid from my wife and snuck into the basement without her knowing another it. guitar <laughs> you know who you are <laughs> there, there's it, not just one of those people by by the way had, there's there's had, way more co- than one of those people <laughs> honestly I, though i i had a coworker who he celebrated the fact that he finally got his license by buying himself oh, a by buying slightly a guitar. expensive guitar nice and but he knew that he was gonna he was gonna wreak havoc in the homestead, so he uh, he snuck it in. So, uh, how long is that? How long is that secret gonna last? I mean, now there there are oh no 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 the, 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 he's he's been there are busted. people out there who my wife my wife would not realize if I had a new guitar because she is keeping no track of any of that. So if a new guitar showed up, she wouldn't she definitely wouldn't notice. But there are other people out there who are like they know exactly how many of the various things that their partners have <laughs> and, they, yeah. and they are keeping track <laughs> honestly when a new it's a very very specific size envelope that comes in containing a, a field oh she's just like more mm, yeah yeah you need to know right my, because my, my addi- my addiction's like you know twelve dollars for a pack of three, so I'm no harm done. No, no harm done. I could say that I could probably take, although now because there are limited edition ones that I own, but since I bought them all at face value, and I could probably take all of my field notes, and it still wouldn't equal the amount that this guy spent on his guitar. However, I think now I could sell them and probably get. A similar guitar. You think? Wow. Oh my gosh, you should go online to eBay and see how much see people are selling for. these like special edition notebooks for. And I'm like, oh why? God. They're you can go and find them for twelve like twelve, thirteen bucks. They're just hoping somebody will be uh naive and, and bite on that, I guess. Yeah. 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 So one of the things I I was talking to a friend that used to work with me 
and they moved across country to actually your neck of the woods, actually up in, well, not quite your neck of the woods, but your side of the country, up in Washington state. And he was, he was telling me, he was like, Hey, I, I heard that you met a friend of mine at, at the AIA convention. And I completely blanked on this because it was such this weird occurrence that somebody had come up to me, they were like walking by and they, I guess were probably like glancing at like all of the people's name tags as they, as they saw them and stuff. And he stopped and he was just like, Cormac? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, you're, you're not Cormac that works at Air St. Gross, are you? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> How like, many Cormacs are like, there? Come on. Come on. Thank you. <laughs> well, that, that is, they don't even get me started. They're like, uh, I, I went to pick up, um, my taco Tuesday order and they were like, can I get a name? I'm like Cormac. And they're like, can I get a last name? I'm like, and I literally said, I was like, how many Cormacs have come in to pick up an order from you today or ever? Right. And she's like, fair enough. But what's your last name? <laughs> Fair enough, but we're collecting this data so that we can sell it and make the money back that we're not making on the tacos. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But he was just like, oh, I've heard, I've heard stories of you from, you know, my friend. And I'm like, oh, and I was just like, I'm not quite sure how to take that. He goes, oh, no, 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 all positive. But it was yeah, just right. weird. I, <laughs> the reason I bring it up is I was just like, you know, the, how, and we, we sort of touched, touched on this in the last episode, but it was literally how small we kind of think that architecture is like this big, massive community in, in when it comes to like the AIA or the American architects, it, it is a much smaller community than we actually think it is. And you're bound What's in number is determined like to run into someone registered licensed architects that, in the U S something like that, that you sort of know, or that knows you or knows, you know, like is a friend of a friend of a friend kind of thing. It's like six degrees of separation from Cormac. Right, right. <laughs> you, Cormac is Kevin Bacon, the Kevin Bacon of architecture. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> actually, it was, it was interesting. It is, you know, funny enough, I actually had another conversation with another friend that it is actually in your state. And it was just kind of fun to like catch up with people that you worked with, you admired, they left, they went on to their merry yeah. way. And again, it's like, I guess that kind of like, you know, collection of just like how tight knit architecture sort of is. There's going to be tons of people that you don't know. And then there's going to be tons of people that you do know. And then those interesting, there's going to be those people that you may not know, but they know somebody who knows you. And it's just like, it's just wild. Like, you know, how, how many, like, again, how many people would have just you know, said, Evan, you're not the Evan Troxel from the <laughs> Troxel podcast, are you? No, but I am the Evan Troxler from the Arca Speak podcast. <laughs> Ooh, very <laughs> <Or> nice. <laughs> or both. Oh, man. I was going to say, are you yeah. denying your, your, your other baby? No, I guess not. Yeah, I, I shouldn't play favorites. But it's okay, it's okay to play favorites, and, and I know that this one is. You know, your first is always. Yeah, exactly. It's your first right love. There. Yeah, it's my heart. <laughs> oldest child best child <laughs> not in this house if you if you believe my if you believe my sons they think my da they believe that they, my daughter is my favorite child they believe that because it's true <laughs> it's true i mean they ain't gonna listen to it so i can admit to it you get yeah they're not gonna hear it and and not only that um like she's just the nicest kid right maybe that yeah. has something to do with yeah. it. You like I, I yeah, actually is. like to be around nice people. That's what you can tell your other your boys. <laughs> actually, <laughs> the other day is like, you know why she's my favorite? Cuz she's got a job. Right. <laughs> yeah. She she keeps busy. She 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 doesn't bother me as much. And she she's she's got a job. She's taking care of herself. She's taking responsibility. All the things that I wish you would do. That's what you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It sounds like a good lecture. You should give your own TED talk. Huh? Yeah. So what's uh what's been going on in your neck of the woods? I'm I'm starting to uh so well, I, I a lot of stuff's going on just with taking care of stuff on my for my mom, but um 
starting to plan a summer vacation. Ooh, is this your yeah. Banff trip? So I don't think we're going to do Banff. I think we're going to do something in the U.S. because so logistics have changed. They've shifted with um, sure. my my daughter in law, and she's going to be she's she's doing some major army stuff this summer, and she's going to be in Georgia for some of that time, and then driving back this way. So we're thinking we're going to meet in the middle. So I'm, this is a good opportunity for me to bring this up with you because I'm wondering, like, would, would you fancy yourself driving to meet up in South Dakota? Hmm. Yeah, think That's about interesting. It. And yes, it would, <laughs> would almost be the impulsive answer because it is There's a, things to do it, there. there. There's there's like a few national parks and like an amazing state are, park. And I don't remember the names to all this stuff, but, you know, there, and obviously there's like Mount Rushmore and all that kind of stuff. So. Sure. Yeah. And the Badlands and right. Black Hills and all of that other stuff. Yep. And, you know, yep. and, and it is one of those. So there are a few states. So my wife and I have been, you know, how you like, you know, it's like, oh, how many states have you been to? And I erroneously said that, oh, I think I've only, I have only not been to seven. But what I meant to say is I've only been to not been to seven in the continental U.S. I still have not been to Alaska or um, Hawaii, but the Dakotas are one of those on my list that I haven't been to. I and, haven't either. Yeah, and I've been very anxious about about going there. So nice. Would I be very very oh welcome or open to that meetup? Yes, that'd be sweet. Could we? Could we do the a Arca Speak podcast from the top of a hill somewhere? <laughs> yeah, I'll bring the Starlink. We'll make it happen. <laughs> there you go. And yep. you have to yodel. Is that a thing there? Is that... <laughs> I don't know. Isn't it a thing to like once you Just climb on top of a from mountain? From the top you of have a to mountain. Yodel? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, probably. So I, I've I've learned that there is rock climbing in Mount Rushmore, and so As I'm he, thinking you know. maybe maybe there's like an ascent I can do on a president's face or something. That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm glad I'm going to just stay professional and not respond to that <laughs> for once. Uh, for once. <laughs> <laughs> so Take that, we're Teddy. also going to we're also going to climb um Devil's Tower in Wyoming. So oh, really? that's going to be and that's like northeast Wyoming. I've never been that far over in Wyoming. You know, I've always stayed on the western okay. edge of Wyoming because of Yellowstone and the Tetons. How, uh, how the far Tetons are they? Will probab- they're pretty far away. I mean, uh I don't know, it's at least a day's worth of driving. Not close. Not close. From so from Yellowstone from, area, from from Jackson, okay. and Yellowstone. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. just saying, like, how far is it from? I'm just trying to figure out how far. Oh, how much from more like, driving and hanging out in South with, Dakota with you all will I be doing? Good question. Um. Because so, it is where, in it is Montana? in northeast or Wyoming. Sorry, Wyoming of Wyoming. Okay, so it's, it is it's really twenty hours not of driving too far. from here. <laughs> but how far is it from, like, say, the uh, South Dakota, where where we would be hanging in South Dakota right. to that area? Right. Yeah, I don't think it's that far. I think it's it's right next to. Um, it's not far from like Rapid City. Which okay, is, and Rapid City is yeah. Let's see. Everything everything is is very deceiving when you start looking at it going west because you know the states get much much bigger. So you're like, "Oh, they're only like, you know, a inch apart on the map." Like, yeah, well, a inch apart could be like a day, day and a half. Right. Yeah, it's not like the East Coast, right? <laughs> no, it's not like the distance between just us looking at like say Rapid City to Billings, I could be in I could go from D.C. through Maryland, Pennsylvania, Jersey, New York, and probably be up into 
Connecticut or something like that. Easy. I could fit like wow. half of like, you know, the Eastern seaboard in that, that stretch. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Totally. So that's kind of what's new here. We, we just started to figure that out because she was down here for like Father's Day stuff and we're like, we got to figure this out. And, and so that's why I think Banff is out this year, even though that was something that we were all looking forward to. We're just trying to find something a little more central to east and west coast and push ourselves a little farther than we've been east of here before. See some new stuff. So uh, yeah. I'm excited about that for sure. But you know, let, let, now let's be, let's be fair to her though. If she's down in Georgia mm -hmm. and you're talking about meeting in the middle, that is not in the middle. <laughs> nobody, nobody said we're meeting. So I'm towing a trailer and I've got a bunch of people. She's solo in a van. This is, it's okay. I, I'm okay with, hey. with her driving a little bit farther. <laughs> Plus she has to get back to here. She has to get back to Eugene. So, I mean... We're, we're, we're going to make it work. <laughs> don't, don't, don't complicate this. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, maybe she might want to listen to this episode. The, the, the fairness of her trip I see. versus your trip and all that other stuff, you know. Just I see, I see. Little... So, yeah, you're, you're going to propose Wichita, I think is what you're saying. Or Topeka. <laughs> Wichita. There's a Oklahoma we'll City... That. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to start singing. I'm uh, hoping not to go that I'm far south. Start singing Route I mean, 66. She may have to. She may have to go that way. Um, but yeah, I'm not quite sure the route that she would take to get back up. I'm not sure the route that I'm going to take either. But it, it's it, it's interesting because between here and like Twin Falls, there's nothing that directly connects like from here over towards Salt Lake City. I could go south, mm -hmm. or I can go north before starting to get go that direction. So. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. I don't, you know, we're in the very early stages of kind of planning this out. Um, but, but my goal also, like, like what you said is, is like, I want to get all of my stamps in, in my, yeah. uh, my national park, uh, journal. Right. <laughs> so yeah, your national selfishly park, uh, password. I, there's so many that I haven't been to out that direction yeah. that I would, that would be super. Oh cool. my gosh. Yeah. So for me to get, there to like just say rapid city mm -hmm. um if i take the both of them are basically just a hair over 1200 miles okay um but it's kind of cool because then i could take we could take the frank lloyd Wright trail again <laughs> <laughs> gotta get some architecture oh. into this yeah, I, I, hey. I need to do some research on that, too. So, yeah, for me, it's 1,300 miles, so just yeah, a little bit farther. Yeah. There you go. So, yep. um, see, so that's more in the middle. It is. Because it's, it's 1,231 yeah. to Rapid City, and so it's 1,300 for you. So, yep. see, that's more of in the middle. That seems Thir to sound thirteen twenty one for me. Yeah, no, that, okay, that uh, does sound yeah. fair. So, yeah, it does. You know, I can do that. But for her, yeah, not so much. Yeah, well, she she's driving out there now, and she's gonna be driving back then. So, I don't know where where, where is she, she at. Be good. Is she Fort Benning, Fort Stewart. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the names. Um, she's going to Kentucky first, and then to. Georgia. Fort so. Knox? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fort Knox. Sounds fun. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for military, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I doubt it. I doubt it's going to be fun. <laughs> From what I know. <laughs> well, you know. Fun yeah. is a state of mind, right? Type two fun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, well i'm also quotes. hoping to to also take brian mckay lyons up on his offer to because my wife does want to head to nova scotia as well we should definitely do that one together so you leave your wife at home wait um let's do <laughs> i mean don't get me wrong i, I agree but 
Maybe that'd be the second. She's already time. shown. She's already shown interest. You you've already mentioned it. That's, this is the well. Problem. You know, this is her. This is a milestone birthday for her. This is our twenty fifth wedding anniversary year, and you're going to spend um, it with Brian McKayla <laughs> and her and her. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I might hold on. I might hold ignore. on, honey. Hold on. Yeah, hey, you, you just be quiet for a minute. <laughs> oh. I, I've, yeah, I've, I'm having a conversation with Brian. <laughs> exactly. No, really, the intent is also to hit up. Um, she's a huge, huge Anna Green Gables fan. Read all of the oh, books yeah, yeah. countless times. As a dear husband, I for her birthday one time bought her the box set of all of the DVDs of the movies that were made about the books. And, um, she absolutely loves all of those. And so she, if we're going to be on that side of the planet anyway, and she wants to make sure that we also go to Prince Edward okay. and go to the Green Gables house and all of that other stuff. So is this your summer vacation planning effort? That is, or is this just a, a, another trip that you want to want to do yes it, and i don't know how to answer that definitively if it's a summer trip or if it's a just a trip because yeah. you know us and our our quest to add as many miles as possible onto my poor little <laughs> your, yeah. on your poor jeep so would you be interested in like okay so i'm gonna go to you know south dakota would yes. you you should plan your own south dakota summer vacation too we happen to meet in the middle but then we work our way back to our locations you know our home bases from from there yeah. that might be kind of cool maybe, maybe i'm just throwing it out there just put planting a seed right now yeah know, see see what see what happens with this and water this well, you take you, it home you water the first let's see how it grows well you know some of the first things that i'm going to do is what am i you know what what website am i going to pull up and plot out my uh my drive atlas obscura the atlas, atlas obscura, obscura is com coming out yep, yep. and there's some amazing <laughs> things if if P i i need to preach this to to everybody who you know likes doing road trips is like you know there's not some enough people things. know about the atlas obscura right no, not at all and right and like people are like oh i'm on these road trips and i I just don't know what to do or something like that. Just like, take oh, the highway. They're just trying like, to get somewhere. Oh, contraire, yeah. mon frere. Whip out the old <laughs> pocket computer here and pull up Alice Obscura and you can find some amazing things. I mean, yes, we, we did it on my road trip with when I did my little architectural road trip with episodes still going to be coming up sometime soon. And then there is, and just like my whole coast to coast trip with my son, I mean, totally did that. It's just, it's so fun to like discover things. And actually one of my memories from that, because memories are like five years ago, you were doing this. And since it was on an AIA kind of like stretch of like, it was right. uh, the, the world's largest ball of twine. That's um, right. You, you sent know, me that like, picture. <laughs> I did. I was just like, come on, how, how can people not want to see the world's largest ball of twine? I like how or, it's got its own little gazebo. It's it's housed, so it, it keeps it yeah. kind kind of out of the elements. It's still open air, exactly. but it's it's uh, yeah. protected from the from the rain and the sun. Yeah, exactly. And there is just like <laughs> all these like little things. It's like being in the geodetic cent, you know, dead center of North America, or like stopping in and seeing like the world's largest Van Gogh painting. And people who are familiar with like. Western Kansas will know what I'm talking about. Right. <clears throat> so this is an obscure episode of things that we're talking about. We started with yes. hats and we've transitioned to uh, road trips and summer vacations. Yep. And this is, this seems to be the appropriate time to, to restate how important it is to leave yep. the office and go do something yes. in summertime, <laughs> get out Absolutely. and have experiences and enrich your person with new experiences that you can then use as a as a more experienced individual on a project. Yeah. I'm going to get this quote wrong, but I saw this quote. We were at a an antique store, and there was an old typewriter that was similar to my old typewriter. And they had a you know piece of paper that was in there and had like a little quote typed from from Thoreau 
and I'll get it wrong, but it, it roughly said, you know, how can you sit down and how can you sit down and type your life if you aren't willing to stand up and live it? Something like that, mm. something mm. of that, mm. that, you know, sort. And I was just like, you know what? That's profound. And that's sort of this conversation that I, that I have actually been having with a lot of like the, um, younger architects in our office is get out there. Cause I've, I've been talking to them about, you know, my, my road trip and they were just, Oh, what did you see? You know, and I was telling them and like, didn't you get bored? Just like you know, a week looking at architecture and I'm like, no, because the whole point about it was, is to kind of like reconnect and see what other people are doing mm -hmm. out there almost take a step into the pages of our architectural history books on some of the things that I saw. And then just as I was, you know, telling you, it's just like, it's kind of that, in, or we, we say this to each other all the time. It's like, it's reconnecting with the passion that got us into this in the first place. If you on countless times during the 12 years of this podcast, chastised me for not using my, um, my PTO and getting out of the office and doing that very thing. <laughs> right. And oh, only finally have I said, all right, fine. Like the last two weeks, I, I came back and I was just talking to a coworker and he had just come back from some a long stretch uh, being out of the office. He's like, I did not. He's a Cormac. I did not look at a single email. I did not answer a single phone call. I did not do anything because you know what? It's my time and I was here to enjoy it. You know, he said... He told me he spent four days, four days at the National Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio, four mm. days, like just walking through there. I was like, okay, you and I just went through the Air and Space Museum. We just talked about it. You know, maybe we were there for, I don't know, necessarily four hours, but it wasn't four days. And I'm like, oh my it wasn't Lord. Four days like, worth, what can right. you... Yeah, it wasn't four days worth. I mean, could we have spent like four days? Maybe if we were like super geeking and like. Let's measure every bolt on every airplane. <laughs> but, uh, I can pull out my polycam and scan everything and yeah, document it all. <laughs> which, yeah. by the way, you did you did mention that you were polycamming the SR-71. How much of it right. did you actually get? Just like, just the one side, because I figured like, oh, if I could get this into 3D, I could mirror it, <laughs> you mm. know? And then I could, it is a symmetrical object. Um, but because, yeah. okay, so it turns out that like that, that plane is really hard for the camera to pick up because it's so dark, right? Like it's yeah. a black plane, yeah. obviously, and it's not well lit. It's it's kind of dramatically lit in that it's yes. like has a, has a yeah. bunch of lights underneath that are kind of uplighting it to some level. But it it had a hard time grabbing it because and, and because there's like so much going on around it. So the way that the lidar scanning on the phone works is it is shooting out kind of a, you know, it's, it's, they call it LIDAR, but it's not, it's not laser. I don't believe, um, I'm right. not quite sure what, what the actual tech is, but, um, there's so, it's such a busy space, right? Cause I'm on the ground, the plane is kind of above me. So it's really hard to get above that leading edge and scan any of the top surface of the plane anyway. So it was a failure. <laughs> I'm sure there's, I bet if you went to the 3D warehouse, SketchUp's 3D warehouse, you could probably just get that model, right? So I'm sure I, I wasn't can. too worried about it, but, but anyway, yeah, it didn't grab What's interesting much. is I'm wondering if this whole, when you were actually trying to like do the LiDAR capture, it's got the radar absorbing paint and all that other stuff. I'm curious. It looks <laughs> just like, I can't. I, don't, I know it's there. I just There's don't see it. There's nothing there. Yeah, right, right. It's 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 stealth. Uh, <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. But but anyway. So, um, but yeah. I I mean, I'm I'm bound and determined to finish this year with zero days of PTO. I don't want a single PT. I don't, I don't want to carry over PT. I want all my it. PTO used. Use it or lose it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, you've, you you're off to um, a good start. Like you said, you took, you took some time I'm off doing... upcoming, yeah. upcoming episode content here of, uh, sharing yeah. some experiences you've had recently with architecture. So that I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. 
road trip to the, I don't know, we'll come up with a, the name when we're talking about it when we, when we do that episode. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Is that it for this one? I think this one's a short but sweet one talking about the joys of, uh, summer tripping, getting away from the computer, getting away from the office and refreshing your mind, body, and soul. So everyone Sweet. out there listening, do it. All right. Do it. Up.